Welcome to another Poxnor expansion preview. We are joined once again by lead designer Sokolov to go over some of the runes and content that you can expect in Expansion 28. I'm excited to introduce Expansion 28, Spirits Beyond, to you today. We have concluded the Delim arc with Visions of Amarev, following the failed Nefari invasion and causing the Delim to go into hiding. And while this expansion will still deal with some of the consequences of those events, the name of this expansion alludes to the presence of the Royal, a new kind of spirit elemental, into the realm of Pox. We saw the first of their kind into the Royal Echo. With spirits beyond, the Royal will now arrive in full force, chasing their prey, the Jin, who escaped their clutches by escaping to our realm. In this expansion, there will be a number of split runes. These, however, have been largely designed to be playable in full faction decks. At the same time, there will still be a number of full faction runes for each faction. Here we have one of the Royo, the Rift Lord. The Royo's manifestation in this realm isn't complete, or they would easily overwhelm all opposition here. Their inability to fully manifest limits their power, but also leaves them somewhat mysterious. Where the Arroyo are present, you'll usually find a telltale dead magic zone that signals the veil between worlds. The Rift Lord specializes in summoning additional spirits from his realm through these rifts, although somewhat temporarily, as the spirits must occupy that magic zone or they'll continuously lose HP. Here we have the Arroyo Shade Striker fighting a new Wings champion called the Prismatic Wing. The Wing is an alternative attack specialist, gaining frost, fire, and magic rain attacks when the sigil is triggered. Another interesting tidbit about the Arroyo is that they have actually made a contract with Serkin in order to gain access to our realm but it is not yet fully clear what those terms were. Here we have two Naria Dryads, Underdeath's Kafir Forest Vampire Plants. We have the Naria Queen on the left, and the Naria Flame Willow on the right. Lore-wise, they represent new growth in the forest, born from the ashes to the burnt forest left behind by the Nefari invasion. Mechanically, they will steal from enemies and buff themselves at the same time. This includes stats as well as abilities. In one case, the Naria will steal damage from the opponent and buff a nearby champion with that same damage. The Naria Queen, in particular, has an ability that watches for these kinds of buffs and doubles them up on herself. In this piece, we have the Vadaki Needlewing shooting blades of steel at a Farren monk named Leaf on the Wind. An appropriate name given how agile he is at dodging those projectiles. The Vadaki are probably going to be the most controversial of the split runes in this expansion as their Iron Fist Sunderland constructs. Their backstory is that the defensive wall being built by the Iron Fish stronghold stumbled across some ancient Valdaki cities, discovering that these old constructs were left behind. The Leaf on the Wind is a Farglar Swamp Savage Tundra Monk, and there are a number of other monks fitting that particular split in this series. The premise is that the monks of the swamp and the martial artists of the tundra saw common ground and began cross-training their disciplines, resulting in a new way of martial artists from Farins to Snaptooth. And here we have the Silent Master, training and practicing his stances in some ancient ruins. His unique ability will be a boon to both Farron and Monk builds alike, as it references both class and race. An alternative to Warcry, this ability triggers a cooldown reduction and an attack chain reset for nearby allies. The fist on the right of this image is Southern Water Discipline, a knockback version of the Northern Wave Discipline. Next we have the Valdaki again. Here we see two more, along with player created rune called the Skizik Banner in the background with the fish there, made by Ultima. The evidence from the Vadaki cities appear to reveal that dwarves and Draxar coexisted there, and perhaps the Skizik were originally created via this experimentation of construct and mutations. And finally, I leave you with this image, the Mother of Fraun, coming with the midterm. In addition to new content, we'll be rolling out a new map rotation with the expansion as well, along with several concept maps that feature layout types we haven't done before, and also alternative layouts for existing maps. We'll be actively gathering data and feedback on those maps when they launch, so we encourage you to tell us what is working and what isn't on those maps. We've also done a pass on range champions, and in general there's been a tap in efficiency for most of them. Some were buffed as a result of this, but most lost a touch of damage or had a small cost increase. Dots should now be capped at rank 1 for range champions, and there have been various buffs to themes as well. For example, reducing the number of regen 1 to 3 lines on some SL runes. Finally, some work has also been done on passive champions. These specifically targeted offensively focused passive champions so they now pay a more appropriate amount of Nora for their offensive potential. Expect these adjustments to be ongoing. Thank you for watching, and be sure to follow Pox Nora on Facebook and Twitter.